Hey there, I'm Lena Moore. Before I dive into my story, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Now let's get into it. It was just another Tuesday morning, or so I thought. I had just finished a long call with my manager about the upcoming software release. My job as a developer never seemed to pause, but life had thrown me a curveball. Both of my parents were diagnosed with a rare, degenerative disease that demanded more than what I could juggle on my own. I remember feeling like the world had stopped spinning for a moment. You need to focus on what's important right now, Lena, my best friend Jill advised over coffee. Your parents need you, and your job. Well, it'll just have to wait. I knew she was right, but dropping everything wasn't as easy as it sounded. Yet I tried. Every evening after work, I was at my parents, cooking, cleaning, making sure their meds were taken, and just being there. Lena, this isn't sustainable. You look exhausted, Jill pointed out one evening, concern creasing her brow. I know, I know. But what choice do I have? They're my parents. What I needed was Rick, my husband, to step up. But when I approached him, the conversation didn't go as planned. I've got my hands full with my own projects, Lena. You know how critical this phase is for me at the firm, Rick said, not even looking up from his laptop. But I need you, Rick. My job is just as demanding, and I'm managing to take care of my parents. Can't you help out a bit? The frustration in my voice was hard to mask. Look, Lena, I'm not asking you to choose between your job and your parents, but I can't put my career on hold either. Maybe hire some help if it's getting too much, he suggested dismissively. Help? I need my husband, not a caretaker I can pay off. I shot back, my voice rising more than I intended. As days turned into weeks, I saw less and less of Rick. He was either late from work or out on business trips that seemed to pop up out of nowhere. It felt like he was avoiding the chaos that my life had become. One particularly tough night, my mom had a fall, and I was scrambling to get her to the emergency room. I remember texting Rick frantically, hoping he'd come and support me. Can't. In a meeting. Handle it, Lena. His text read, a stab of abandonment straight to my heart. Sitting in the sterile hospital corridor, mom clutching my hand with a strength that belied her frailty, I realized I was truly alone in this. Rick's absence during this critical moment spoke louder than any argument we had. It wasn't just his physical absence. It was his emotional withdrawal that cut deep. After mom was settled back at home, I confronted Rick. We need to talk, Rick. This, us, it's not working. You've turned your back on me when I needed you the most, I said my voice steady but heavy with unshed tears. Lena, I'm here, aren't I? Just because I'm not at your beck and call doesn't mean I don't care. Rick defended himself, but his eyes didn't meet mine. No, Rick. Being physically present occasionally isn't being here for someone. You've made your priorities clear. My parents and I are just not part of them. It hurt, acknowledging the gap between us. But that conversation marked a pivotal turn in my life. I realized then that sometimes... The support you expect from those closest to you might never come. And as painful as it was, it was up to me to navigate through my parents' illness and my crumbling marriage, one precarious step at a time. After the hospital incident, I threw myself even more into caring for my parents. Jill came by one evening, her face etched with concern. Lena, you can't keep going like this. You're running on fumes. I know, Jill, but what choice do I have? It's not like Rick is stepping up. Have you thought about talking to his family? Maybe they could talk some sense into him. That night, I made a difficult call to Rick's sister, Nora. I hoped she could influence him, make him see sense. Nora, it's Lena. I'm really struggling here with mom and dad's health. I could use Rick's support. There was a pause. Then, cold and measured, Nora's voice came through. You think you've got problems, Lena? Rick told me about the challenges he's facing at work. Maybe you should be more supportive of him. I clenched my fist, trying to keep my voice steady. I am supportive, Nora. But this isn't about his work. It's about family needing us. Rick has always said you're great at your job, Lena. Maybe too great. Are you sure you're not neglecting our parents for your career? Her words stung like a slap. Neglect? Me? Nora. You know that's not true. I've put everything on hold for them. Can you say the same? There was silence on the line before she hung up. The next day, things took a turn for the worse. 
Walking into the kitchen to make coffee, I overheard Rick and Nora whispering. The word money caught my attention. She's here all day, handling the finances. Who knows what she's doing with their money? Nora's voice was a hissing whisper. Are you accusing me of stealing? I confronted them, disbelief and anger rising in my voice. Rick looked uncomfortable, but Nora faced me squarely. Yes, I am, Lena. You've had ample opportunity. And suddenly, Mom and Dad's accounts are draining unusually fast. I use their funds for their care. Medications, treatments, home care services. I have receipts for everything. That's convenient, Lena. Taking care of them or taking advantage. I grabbed a folder from the counter, shoving the papers at her. Look for yourself, Nora. Every penny accounted for. Nora flipped through the documents reluctantly, her face hard. This doesn't change anything. I'll be watching you, Lena. As she stormed out, Rick wouldn't meet my eyes. I was alone, wrongly accused and utterly betrayed. Not just by Nora, but by Rick too, my own husband, who should have been my partner, not my accuser. This was the turning point, where the fabric of trust unraveled completely, leaving me to wonder just how I'd clear my name while keeping my family from falling apart at the seams. The accusations from Nora hit me hard, but they also lit a fire under me. I wasn't going to let lies define my actions or my character. I had to be smart, though. Emotion wouldn't win this battle, only cold, hard facts. The very next morning, I set up a meticulous system to manage and document every financial transaction concerning my in-law's care. I created spreadsheets and linked receipts to every entry, ensuring transparency that even Nora couldn't question. See this, Jill? I showed her my setup on my laptop one afternoon. Every cent spent is logged, dated, and backed by a receipt. Nora wants a battle? She'll get one. Jill nodded, impressed. This is solid, Lena. But what about Rick and Nora? They're not going to just back off because you're organized. I have a plan for that, too. I wasn't just on the defense anymore. I was taking the game to them. I started wearing a small voice recorder during my interactions with Rick and Nora. Nothing illegal just enough to protect myself if they tried to twist my words. As days passed, I also reached out to other family members, sharing my efforts and the systems I'd put in place. Conversations over coffee with Rick's Uncle Tom and his wife Susan were strategic, ensuring they knew the truth from the ground up. You're really going to bat for them, Lena, Uncle Tom remarked one day, looking over the documents I'd brought to show him. It's clear you care a lot. I do, Uncle Tom. And it's not just about proving Nora wrong. I want to make sure they're taken care of properly. Gradually, the narrative began to shift within the family. Where suspicion had once tainted their view of me, respect began to take root. It wasn't just about clearing my name now. It was about cementing my role as a dedicated caregiver who had been wrongfully accused. With each passing week, as the paper trail grew and my conversations with family members bore fruit, I could see the change. Nora's influence waned her allies and the family shrinking as more and more relatives came to see her accusations for what they were, baseless and driven by spite. During a family gathering, I took the opportunity to speak up, not confrontationally, but with calm assertiveness. I know there have been concerns about finances, I started, voice steady as all eyes turned to me. I want everyone to feel secure in how I manage the care for Rick's parents. Please take a look at these documents. Everything is accounted for. And if you have questions, I'm here. The room was quiet, but nods followed, and Uncle Tom spoke up, his voice firm and supportive. Lena has shown nothing but dedication. It's more than most would do, and we appreciate it. It's time we put this suspicion to rest and focus on what's important, taking care of family. Even Rick, who had been more a shadow in these meetings, seemed to look at me with new eyes. It wasn't reconciliation, not yet, but it was a start. As people mingled and discussed, Nora was noticeably isolated. Her earlier confidence seemed to crumble as the family's support shifted towards me. It was a small victory, but a significant one. My plan was working, and though the road was still long, I felt the first real hope since this ordeal began. The day of the family gathering to discuss the will and care of Rick's parents, I was prepared, not just with the financial logs, but mentally and emotionally, to face whatever came next. This wasn't just another meeting. It was the turning point I had been working towards. As everyone settled around the large dining table, I placed folders in front of each seat. Inside, each were copies of detailed logs, 
financial statements, and receipts, all the documentation I'd meticulously compiled over the past months. The meeting started with general updates on health and ongoing needs, but the air was charged, everyone aware of the underlying tensions. Finally, Uncle Tom turned the discussion toward the finances. Lena, would you like to go over the financials with everyone? Uncle Tom's voice was encouraging, his nod a silent show of support. I stood, feeling the weight of every gaze in the room. Thank you, Uncle Tom. I've prepared a detailed report of all expenses and care provided for Mom and Dad. I believe transparency is key, and I want to ensure everyone is comfortable with how their funds are being managed. As I walked them through each document, pointing out the checks and balances I'd implemented, the room was quiet, the only sounds the rustling of papers and the occasional affirming murmur. When I finished, there was a moment of silence, a collective processing of the information. Then, Nora spoke, her voice sharp as ever. This is all well and good, Lena, but how do we know these aren't just fabricated? You could have easily set this up to cover your tracks. I was ready for this. I invite any of you to independently audit these documents. I've also recorded all relevant financial transactions with the bank statements to verify. Everything is accounted for, down to the last cent. Rick, who had been silent up until now, finally chimed in, his voice hesitant. Lena has been thorough. Maybe it's time we trust her management of the finances. Nora's face reddened, her eyes darting around the room, looking for allies, but finding none. The relatives who had once whispered behind my back now nodded in agreement with Rick. Aunt Susan spoke up, her tone gentle but firm. Nora, Lena has done more than most would have in her place. It's clear she's dedicated to their well-being. Your accusations seem frankly out of line with what we're seeing here. The room nodded, and the shift was palpable. Nora was left grasping at straws, her facade of concern now clearly seen as driven by other motives. The meeting ended with a consensus on my management of the financials and care, and an appreciation for the transparency I'd provided. Nora left quickly, her exit marked by a lack of the usual confrontational goodbye. As the family dispersed, with many stopping to thank me or apologize for doubting me, Rick stayed behind. His expression was unreadable. Lena, I... Save it, Rick. Let's just focus on what needs to be done for your parents. I cut him off, not ready to delve into whatever emotional apology he might have mustered. That day, I didn't just clear my name. I reclaimed my dignity and ensured that the care of my in-laws was no longer overshadowed by needless drama. It was a victory, bittersweet, but a victory nonetheless. The weeks following the family meeting were tough, the kind that test you to your core. My relationship with Rick fell apart. The trust was gone, and with each passing day it became clearer that we were walking different paths. After much reflection, I made the difficult decision to divorce Rick. It was painful but necessary for my own well-being. I needed to be true to myself, and that meant letting go. As I dealt with the fallout of our failed marriage, Nora faced her own repercussions. Having lost the family's trust, she found herself isolated. Her tactics to undermine me had backfired, leaving her on the outskirts of the very group she tried to sway. It was a harsh lesson in accountability. With my personal life undergoing such a drastic transformation, I turned back to my career. Re-engaging with my work was both a distraction and a rejuvenation. My colleagues welcomed me back with open arms, appreciating the resilience and dedication I had shown during my personal trials. Lena, we've missed your insight and hard work around here, my boss said on my first day back. The warmth in his words was a balm to the soul. I'm glad to be back, I replied, feeling the truth of my words. I was ready to move forward, to rebuild on my own terms, during this time, I continued caring for my parents. They saw the changes in me, the hard decisions I had made, and they were proud. Their health was declining, but their spirits were bolstered by the love and care I provided. When they eventually passed away, it was peacefully, with me by their side, knowing that I had done everything within my power to make their final years comfortable and filled with love. At their memorial, surrounded by family and friends who had seen me through the darkest times, I felt a profound sense of peace. Your parents were fortunate to have you, Lena, Uncle Tom said, his voice thick with emotion. You've shown us all what strength really looks like. I smiled, tears in my eyes. Thank you, Uncle Tom. They taught me that strength every day of their lives. As I stood there, looking at the gathering, 
a mix of faces, some who had doubted me, others who stood by me. I realized I had come out of this ordeal stronger and more grounded. Life had thrown its worst at me, and I had faced it head on, not just surviving, but emerging stronger. The journey was not easy, nor was it without its scars, but it was mine, and I had navigated it with my integrity intact. Now, as I look to the future, I know that whatever challenges come my way, I am equipped to handle them with a clear heart and a steadfast spirit. Now that our story has reached its conclusion, I have a question for you all. Do you think Lena made the right choice by divorcing Rick, considering the complexities of their situation? Could there have been another way to resolve their differences? Or was a clean break the only solution? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. And if you like this story and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing your responses.